Kate Williams for Life Travel. In the few minutes that remain of the show here on Peanuts Politics, I want to welcome back to the studio, because they've all been in the studio before, Chidi Amari, a medical student from Vauxhall in South London. Hi, Chidi. Hello. Thanks mm-hmm. for coming in, Chidi. Temi Shogalola is back, teaching assistant from Bermondsey, also in South London. I know Chidi and Temi, and Temi through Patchwork UK. That's an organisation which is about reaching out to underrepresented communities and trying to get them involved in politics. In the, in the case of people like Chidi and Temi, it works, I'm thankful to say. And also hello to, to Paula Frederick, who is a, a mum of three, who's also been on the show. You were all undecided voters, guys, so just tell us all, one by one. Chidi first, how did you vote? I voted for uh, the party which best fitted my values, and um, that's the way I voted. Well, who are they? Well, I voted for the party that best fitted my values. You talk to me I, about this if you want. To I be. looked. I looked at. Uh, I looked at the the candidates in my area. I looked mm-hmm. at the policies and the party, and I voted for the way which I feel was necessary, uh, in my opinion. For yeah. my and polling places are secret places for for a good reason. That's right. Um, tell me, what about you? Do you want to share with well, us what I'm you really did? I'm proud to say that I voted green. You went green. Yes. Because you were toying with Labour, weren't you? Yeah. Are you a shy green? I'm a proud green. A proud yeah. green. <laughs> and why did you go there? Um. I felt they needed the experience. Um, I think the best lesson is to actually be in there and make sure you don't make the same mistake if in five years' time yeah. they were to get the opportunity to get more se- seats and be in there. So you take them you take them plenty seriously. You just, you just think they need time and you want to yeah, give them your backing. Yeah, they need experience so we don't get the same thing as you get a party that just come in yeah. and make well, why not Then why not Labour? Because you were looking seriously at them. Um, I think not Labour because, again, I think they need to find themselves. Um, they needed to be, I wasn't, even though I spoke to them previously, I, they weren't concrete with decisions such as the NHS, with the economy, with education. And I think they needed to regroup. Um, and I think they're best when they've been out of the game for a while, yeah, collect yeah, themselves. A bit more time to get their act together. Absolutely. Yeah. What about you, Paula? Well, it was a bit of a last minute decision, but I voted Labour in the end. Um, I was toying, I was undecided for quite a while, but um, looking at my constituency and looking at my my needs and my families, I thought that they would um, represent us and do the best thing for us for the next five years. Yeah. Well, some of listen to this, because so many people got this election wrong. They thought it was going to be deadlocked. It was not mm. but remotely deadlocked. I mean, should we pity the pollsters? I mean, now... That's an appeal that's unlikely to get a massive response, I suspect. I'm not suggesting pollsters are in the same boat as bankers. I mean, pollsters have never done us any harm, as far as I'm aware. It's just that when they get it right, we hardly notice. And when they get it wrong, everyone likes to have a laugh. We're just like that, aren't we? But pollsters deserve a fair hearing, though. So I thought I'd give them one. Just a bit of space, a respectful hearing, so they could tell us what went wrong. I'm Joe Toyman, and I'm Head of Political and Social Research at YouGov. We have launched an investigation, an inquiry actually, with the British Polling Council to get to the bottom of this. But my thinking is that it's not just going to be one thing. It's likely that, for instance, uh, we can do more work with differential turnout. In other words, how some groups turn out to vote and others don't quite as much. Then there's the issue of uh, whether people were actually changing their mind at the last minute, fingers hovering over the ballot paper. And then there's the question of whether people are actually answering truly and what we can do to look at things in more detail. Hi, this is Ben Page from Ipsos Mori. Ipsos Mori was the most accurate pollster in terms of the Conservative and Labour share of the vote. Um, We were only 1.8% away from what the Conservatives actually achieved. But nevertheless, the poll systematically overstated Labour in particular. And we need to examine that. We think it's because uh, of differential turnout by Labour, where Labour voters were just less likely to go to the polls, ultimately, whatever they said to pollsters, um, as much as any shy Tories. The exit poll that we undertook was extremely accurate. Um, Paddy Ashton's eaten his hat. Hi, my name is Damon Islow. I'm Chief Executive of Observation. At the time that the polls were conducted, some as early as May the 3rd, they were actually correct. Um, but my perception, backed up by some evidence that we have, is there was a late swing from the Lib Dems to the Conservatives. The key message from both Nick Clegg and David Cameron was that you were not voting between the Conservatives and the Labour Party. You were actually voting for the Conservatives or a Labour SNP joint ticket. And that message had a lot of cut through. 
some of the pollsters. I guess that, that step toe and tongue background music has something to do with the fact that there they are, picking up the pieces and getting ready to sell their wares afresh in the future as best they possibly can. Last word for me by Tim and Jenny, if, if I could. Of course, they get it wrong. As any said, far, one can even blame them for all of that. But weren't there some obvious truths about the kind of, the kind of electorate the British 